another episode of halfway there this is episode number 31 thanks so much for joining me today Uh, this show is all about honest conversations with ordinary christians about today's christian experience my name is eric nevins i'm your host and as i said i'm glad that you've joined and downloaded and listened today this is part of our advent series and you can get show notes and links to every single episode In the Advent series at my website, ericnevins.com. Check that out. Um, I just want to, before we get into our conversation with Don Owsley, we've been we've been having a conversation with him that's ran over the last uh, three weeks, and this will be the last one. I just want to say thank you so much for downloading and listening. Uh, Even though Christmas time is, I guess, officially over yesterday is this when this episode comes out. Uh, there's still more to, to reflect on, and I hope that this will be valuable to you uh, as you finish up your Christmas season. I, I don't know what Christmas is like for you. Here's what it's like for us. We, uh, we live in Colorado, and all of our family lives in Iowa. My wife and I are both from Iowa. We're big, big Iowans. We love the state of Iowa. We go there about twice a year, and we pig out. We just eat all kinds of food. Um, that we love and we never get. And it's a good thing that we never get it because a lot of it's really fattening. But we we go back there. And so I'm probably there right now um, when you're when you're listening to this. And Christmas lasts for a really long time. You know, we we have all these different little family celebrations, you know, the kids, we do uh, Christmas with each of the grandparents and all the different sides of the family. And then uh, we travel home and we do Christmas by ourselves. So Christmas lasts at least a week. And so I just figured that even though Advent is kind of over, you know, Christmas time for me goes forever and maybe it does for you too. It's okay to just keep reflecting and, and bring this out. Anyway, all that said, I hope that Christmas was a wonderful day for you and that you really enjoyed it. I'm going to just get into our interview right now with Don Owsley. about love as that relates to Simeon's experience. Yeah, he um, he was anticipating um, this great hope. He sees the hope who brings the peace and salvation. And it really ties back to the fact that um, it, it was all a measure and it flows out of the love of God. Yeah. Um, he sent his son, as John 3 tells us, because he loved the world. He, uh, you know, and Simeon, I'm sure that as much as he felt joy and really experienced this overwhelming peace, he probably had an incredible amount of love, um, not only for God, but, you know, for this new Savior that he saw. Mm-hmm. He, um the kind of love that uh, we often think of and the love that God had promised in making us love him and love others, which he calls us to do. And and this is exactly what Jesus is about. He saves us to love God. Um, He he saves us because God loved us, but it doesn't stop there. That love then is to be towards others, you know, to love our neighbors as ourselves and, and even to love our enemies. So love is a, is a key and most important aspect of, uh, you know, as Paul says in 1 Corinthians 13, uh, the greatest of these is love. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. God sends Jesus in the world because he loves us. I always love verse 17. Not only did he send it or he didn't send his son in the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved. Right. Yes. Correct. Um, that whoever believes in him is not condemned, but, uh, you know, you're condemned already if you're, if you're just in your sin and don't have that protection of his blood. Let me ask you this question, Don, like there's no mention of love. You know what I mean? Like to this point, 
in Simeon's story, there's a lot of, like, it's easy to identify hope. You know, it's yes. easy to identify peace and kind because of, he actually, you know, actually uses these words and joy. You can clearly see it in the way he's acting, but you don't necessarily see love. Right. Uh, so where would you like, where, I don't, I don't know what to do with that. I guess one, one place that I think we can imply love is Simeon seems to have a really close relationship with God. That's true. Correct. Like he just, which is something that I'm starting to learn to read scripture this way. You know, like, I um, I mean, I know you, you went to school. I, I forget you. I mean, you went to seminary. Yeah. Two times. I had to get it right. Yeah. It took me a couple of <laughs> times too. Right. So, um, so we, you know, when you, when you do that, um, that experience kind of gets put on a pedestal in some ways. And I suppose rightfully so it, it's a focused right. training, but we, you know, we learn to dig into scripture and we learn to all these principles of interpretation and application mm-hmm. and all this stuff. But mm-hmm. what I'm, so c- having been out of that now for a while, uh, I'm starting to read scripture in terms of looking for the relationship to God. You know what I mean? Yes. Right. So, I love to see a passage like this and to see, you know, Simeon, it's not just that he was, he was hopeful because of the promises that were made or, you know, he was joyful because now he's seen a baby. Right. It, it's actually because of what his, jo- his love for the Lord is, is because yes. he loves the Lord and his joy comes out of that love. We tend to read things only at face value. Yeah. Um, But when you compare scripture with scripture, as we're supposed to do, and look at not only the uh, explicit lessons of what it's saying, but also comparatively looking at the, what is implied. I think when we look back at the verse where it says, Simeon, this was a man righteous and devout. And um, the whole idea of righteous was the fact that this guy lived, he had a Proverbs kind of life. He lived the life of righteousness, fulfilling the law of God. And the law of God is fulfilled by loving God and loving others. So all the Ten Commandments and all the other laws in in Leviticus and, and Deuteronomy and Numbers are an expression of God's love and an expression of how we are to love one another, how we are to love even our strangers and enemies. So I think uh, invested in that very word righteous is this whole ball of thing. It wasn't that he was merely a man of duty and that he was Hmm. morally upright, but he was morally upright as defined by his love for God and love for others. And that was the epitome. You know, that is the essence of what it means to be righteous in God. Uh, So the whole point of righteousness is to live along the path of God's love, the path of light. God's word uh, demonstrates and shines upon the path that leads us to God. And so uh, this righteousness later on, it says, uh, Simeon says, you know, he is a light for the revealing or the revelation to the Gentiles. So it was, you know, carried with that, the core of loving God and loving others as, as you love yourself. I think that's what it means by being a light. It's not that we are perfectly moral, upstanding, and so forth, which is a good definition of being holy set apart to God, but that we are to be light and righteous lights. And how is that expressed? Right. Um, Through loving God and loving others. Yeah. I love that. And that's, um, you know, a light shining in the darkness, right? That John talks about there in his prologue. Yeah, that's good. And that also shines through us. Yes. Yeah. Great. Okay. Well, I think that, wraps up love. Thanks, Don. I appreciate that. How can people, if they want to connect to some of your writing and things, how can they do that? So donowsley.com. We'll have that linked up and you have a book that I'll link up to as well 
on um, thanks living thanks living yeah on which it's we're recording this right before <laughs> Thanksgiving yeah. so that's good right um, yes. but when this comes out I think that uh, I'll link that up so that everybody can can get it if they're interested in hearing more from you awesome all yeah, right thank you yeah thanks Doug. Don, thanks so much for that. I really appreciate your heart and thanks for sharing with us. Guys, I want to encourage you, if you would, just go out, go to ericnevins.com, click on uh, right there on the front page, any of the Evan episodes, there's a link to Don's website. Click on donowsley.com. You can check out uh, all of his stuff and definitely do that. Go to Facebook and like Don Owsley's page and... um, you can you can follow him. He'd be a great addition to your feed. He's somebody you should be following. He's a great thinker, and I appreciated him being on the show these last four weeks. So now what I'd like to do is go into our prayer piece. And if you've been following along with each of these Advent episodes, it's been one section that we've had was just an imaginative prayer on an experience in the... Christmas story. We started with Zechariah, and then we did Mary, and then Joseph. And we just imagined through their experiences, each of them encountered an angel in their own way, and each of them got a message about what was going to happen. And we listened, and we tried to to just get an idea of what that was like for them. And we thought about it. We, imag- we imagined ourselves in that in their position. So today what I want to do is take you through the story of Jesus' birth. And um, I've said this before, if you are driving or you're you're doing something active, that's great. Go ahead. If you if it helps you to listen to this and and do that and you think you can um, imagine through it while you do that, great. If you need to take some time, pause this, stop it, come back to it later, that's okay. Um, just take some time, maybe while you're reflecting around the Christmas tree or everybody's out, you're in front of the fire, it's been freezing cold out there. Um, do that and, and just listen, pop your earbuds in and, and just try to, try to imagine whatever works for you. It doesn't matter to me. Just do something and, and I hope it helps. That's what I care about. So here we go. This is Luke chapter two, and I want you to just imagine what this would have been like. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior is born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that's happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby, who was lying in the manger. And when they'd seen him, They spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. 
the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Okay, it's a familiar story. I know it is. And you've just been through it probably. But I want to share it with you again. I want you, I want you to just imagine this. And we'll, let's take it from the perspective of, of the shepherds, because it's really their story. Even though Jesus is being born, they're the ones who get this revelation. Well, let's think about it from their perspective. So a little backstory. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to their own town to register. So imagine that. A census. Some guy in a far off place who has power decides that you got to travel to your hometown. Your family's home. Not just where you grew up, but where your ancestors grew up. Your family's hometown. You got to take a trip. How do you feel about that? It's going to cost you money. It's going to cost you time. You have a choice. How do you feel? So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, which tells us something. Tells us where he's from, who he is his line, because he belonged to the house and line of David. Okay, there it is. These are, these are important people, or their, their lineage is important anyway. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. <laughs> Just imagine how that looks, right? Not married. Expecting a child. At least in that day. And while they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. I mean, just to imagine that scene. First century Jewish houses had a a main level where they put their, it's where the, the animals were and the family lived and the cooking was done and their living space. And then they had a guest room up above. The town is swollen. All the families come in and the guest room's taken. And so Mary and Joseph are down with the family and the animals. All right. And she lays him down in the, in the manger. Now here, now we get to the shepherds. This is all I mean I hate to call it prelude. It's not prelude. It's the meat of the story, but we're taking this from the shepherds' perspective. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them. Here's the fourth angel that we've seen in these stories. And the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were what? Terrified. I mean, just let that sit with you for a minute. Imagine what an angel showing up in front of you feels like, and how scared you would be. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger, which was unusual. They're going to go look. But first, imagine, just imagine how you'd feel about that. Like lying in a manger? Why? Okay. You're wondering. 
Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest. Now just let that burst into your imagination. It's one angel, and then it's a thousand. And the sky lights up with the glory of God. And the sound that erupts into your ears is unlike anything you've ever heard. And the praise for God is unbelievable. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. And that's a message being given to you. His favor is resting on you. And then they're gone. And you can't decide if it's a relief or disappointing. Because you could have listened to that forever. And when the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. I mean, there's no denying who this is from. Or whether or not you saw it, the other guys all saw it too. So they go. They hurried off and they found Mary and Joseph banging on doors. Hey, who's got a baby in a in a manger? Who's got the baby in the manger? Baby in the manger? Baby in the manger? Nope. Baby in the manger? And they find him. You know, what was that like? How excited do you have to be to go do that? Just start banging on doors. <laughs> and when they'd seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. What? How many angels? You saw an angel. Are you sure? They were amazed. Then there's that great line about Mary, but Mary treasured up all these things in her and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Of course they were. Because that's who God is. So my friends, you've been through Christmas now. You've listened. You went to candlelight service. You celebrated with your family. Let me ask you this question. What have you been told about God? How has that led you to praise and to glorify him? And how have you tested it to find out that it's just as you've been told? I'd like to submit to you that as we've waited for Christ, that he has proven true. that if God has kept that promise that he made to Israel, to Abraham so long ago, you can prom- you can count on him keeping his promise to you through this little baby. Friends, Merry Christmas. I hope that your day is amazing. I hope that everything that you do is just full of joy. And if it's not... If you got some weird family things going on, and I know how that is, uh, just remember that he loves you, okay? And he's with you. And he's going to bring you through it. All right. Guys, that's it. That's it for Christmas, for Advent. We'll be back next week. Until then, keep the faith. <laughs>